bunions. Bunions are also known as hallux abducto valgus. Fancy Latin terms for hallux is your big toe, two bones. Abducto is going towards the outside of your foot. Valgus, if you let the bunion go on for too long, your toe will start to turn on its side. In America, we call this a bunion. The reason why we're doing this video today, though, is we hear practically daily somebody say to us that they've either heard that bunions are hereditary or their podiatrist or orthopedic surgeon told them that it runs in their family and the only thing that they can do about it is to have an operation. We would very much like to put that myth to rest. Bunions are not hereditary. We want anybody that has a bunion or has anybody in their family that has a bunion to, to understand the information that we're gonna to share today. Babies at birth have feet that are widest at the ends of the toes. So clue number one is people are not born with bunions. Shoes that are available for children up to about age one, even in America, are shaped like a natural human foot. You'll notice that this baby shoe happened to be my baby shoe, widest at the ends of the toes, not at the ball. But this wise shoe characteristic only occurs for approximately one year in America. Shortly after that, the, the ball of the foot becomes widest for all of us. Unfortunately, the shoe fitting process that is employed in America, when one is employed, is based on the erroneous Brannock device. The Brannock device, as you see here, measures the width measurement across the ball of the foot and gives you a letter that corresponds to that width measurement. If you understand this, you'll understand the problem with bunions. 100% of adult Americans are being fitted into shoes that will no longer allow their toes to be widest at the ends of the toes, they are guaranteed to have a foot that is widest at the ball and gets narrower as it goes on out. Now I have a very excellent picture here that I want to show today. And this excellent picture came out of Podiatry Management Magazine, uh, article written by Dr. William Rossi. Fashion and Foot Deformation, which by the way is on our website uh, if you guys would like to read this or any of the other articles that Dr. Rossi wrote. He made a very compelling argument about why different cultures do things for beauty. And some of my favorite examples are he profiles the cultures where they wear rings in their ears, he profiles the cultures where they wear rings on their necks and so forth and basically pointing out that these things that people do in these cultures have nothing to do with health, but they have to do with the psychological need to fit in in that culture. And why this is so important for our discussion today is we do exactly the same thing here in America. We wear footwear that is not the shape of our foot so that we can fit in and fulfill that societal ideal. Dr. Rossi took this very telling picture and uh, this picture is an x-ray of a foot taken inside of the kind of shoe that almost all of us are wearing all day. And what I want everybody to notice is there, this is your first metatarsal bone. Here's your big toe. And the footwear that most of you are wearing and most adult Americans are wearing today holds your big toe on an angle, a bunion angle, which it then learns. The muscle to the inside of the toe gets short, the muscle to the outside of the toe gets long. So the, the point of the video today is we want everybody to understand that you're not born with a bunion, your shoes are proper at birth. Over the course of your lifetime, if you get fitted into the athletic footwear and the other footwear that's available, it's guaranteed that you're likely to be fitted widest at the ball. For this reason, we would like to encourage you to be thinking about purchasing shoes that are widest at the ends of the toes and not at the ball of your foot. Correspondingly, we also are hearing often that the only thing that my doctor told me I can do for a bunion is to operate on this. If bunions truly were hereditary, we would not be able to cure them in our clinic. And I'm going to boldly state the word cure because that's exactly what we do here at Northwest Foot and Ankle for bunion deformity. We cure them, we do not treat them. If bunions were hereditary, we would not be able to cure them using a simple silicone device. Um, correct toes is what I'd like to encourage those of you that have a bunion. Notice the widest part of my foot is out at the ends of the toes, not at the ball of the foot. 
Bunions are that simple if you understand the mechanics and you understand how footwear plays into that over the course of your lifetime to develop a bunion. Uh, and more importantly, we have strategies to reverse the bunion deformity once it has occurred. Surgery is rarely your best option for bunion deformity. Bunions are preventable if you understand the causes. Thank you.